How's it going, people? Sam and Slava here. And carrying on from where we left off, this is the second quest in the series of that Stolen Hearts. This is Diamond in the Rough. And it's another pretty easy one. It's a members only quest. But, may as well get it out of the way. Plus, there is some very nice rewards. So, without further ado, quest requirements you actually need to have completed Stolen Hearts. And you only need to kill 6 level 2s and 2 level 5 bandits, so it's pretty easy. Uh, food and combat gear if you're a low level. If you're a high level, you can do it bollock naked if you want, either way. And basically, to start this quest, you need to talk to Osman, who is in Al Karad Palace. You most likely would have started it as soon as you completed that Stolen Hearts quest. At which point, you still need to come down here anyway, as to carry on from starting the quest with Osman, just outside of the palace, you will find Ozan right next to the stairs, and we need to talk to him. So if you go ahead and talk to him and quickly run through all of his dialogue, eventually you'll get a cutscene and we'll appear back in that little throne room where you had all the weights before. In the last quest. If you all can remember. Anyway, this cutscene will quickly run through. And we're going to carry on trying to rescue Prince Ali, apparently. Eventually when you regain control you want to check the statue in the center the head scales and your character will automatically pick up the heaviest block there at which point you want to climb up the rope and you'll now be on the roof from here you want to head northwest and on this side of the wall you should be able to drop off the roof go ahead and do that You'll need to turn your camera slightly, but next you want to shimmy across the rope. And you'll end up on the roof with the, fr the flagpoles from the last quest, Stolen Hearts. Only this time, you want to head south, and there's a rug hanging off the side, and we want to eagle jump off. Well, if you thought the last little Stolen Hearts quest had a bit of Assassin's Creed mixed in, this one takes the piss. If you have sound effects on, you'll know why. But yeah, proper Assassin Creed style there. Anywho, finally, you're now on the bottom floor, and we now need to head over to Shandy Pass. So to get a Shandy Pass from here, you just want to head southeast. And if you stick near the southern wall, eventually you'll hit Shandy Pass. Simple as that. Once you're here, you want to talk to Shandy. And quickly go through his dialogue. Eventually he'll give you a bunch of water skins. And he'll say you well, you can pass. So, go through the Shanty Pass. And you'll have a little cutscene of you trekking into the desert. Ozan will start talking to you. And choose the fourth option, let's keep going. And you'll have another little cutscene. And a sundial will appear. So, once you finally regain control, you want to click on the sundial. And you want to make the point go towards the human face. You can do that by clicking on the outer dial. And once you've done that, a beam of light will be coming out of the sundial itself. Turn your camera so it's facing the same direction as pointing and start running in that direction. And eventually you'll run into the next sundial. Go ahead and inspect it and as you do you'll be greeted by... Dragon, Dragon Sand Ninja! Anywho, these are the low-level bandits I was talking about. And go ahead and eradicate them all. Doesn't matter which way you go about doing it. Whatever gets the job done. So finally, once you kill them, the last one you killed will drop a piece of the sundial. So you want to go ahead and pick that up. If you happen to need food, they also drop food for you, conveniently enough. So 
So finally, once you regain control, you want to click on the sundial, and this time you want to make it go towards the monkey head. So once you've done that, another beam of light will start coming out of the sundial, and again you want to turn your camera so it's facing the same direction, and just run over there. Only this time you'll come across a patch of desert that isn't really the same colour. Just go ahead and stand on that and you'll get another cutscene. So you'll have a bunch of chat options that comes up now. It doesn't matter what you choose, eventually you'll sink into the quicksand anyway, so choose whichever you want. And eventually, you'll appear in this weird little cave thing. So, eventually, once you regain control, you want to run through the tunnel, and you'll appear randomly somewhere else. And you just want to keep doing this until Ozan finally decides to stand up and he'll find the sundial piece. Doesn't matter which tunnels you choose, just pick whichever one you want. And after the third or fourth one you'll find the sun, sun dial piece for you. So once he's gone ahead and done that, go ahead and inspect the sun dial, and this time make it face towards the crocodile. And another little beam of light will pop out. And you now want to head through the western tunnel. Well, whichever way the light's pointing to anyway. Southwest, is it? Yeah. So you'll appear in this massive long tunnel, there is absolutely nothing in here, just make your way towards the end. It'll gradually start to get darker as you go through. And Ozan likes to complain a lot apparently. Anyway, eventually you'll come to the end, go ahead and exit the tunnel, or end the tunnel either. And you'll reach the most annoying part of this quest, and you'll appear in the Dung Calphite Cave. So basically the idea is, the gem we had at the beginning of the quest has been stolen by one of these dung beetles, and we basically have to slaughter it to actually get it back. Now the way to work out which ones have the gems and which ones don't is apparently they'll start shining. This took me probably about 5 minutes, I am going to cut it so you don't have to waste as much time as me. But still... Basically, they'll all look exactly the same, and when I say shining, all it'll be is every one or two seconds or so, they'll have like a little glowy effect on them. It's not massively noticeable, and as you can see, I'm running around right now, and it's actually pretty hard to do it this way. I'd recommend standing near one end of the cave, and then lowering your camera angle just so you can see as much as possible. And that should make it a bit easier to find out which ones are actually shining and which ones aren't. It's a bit of a nightmare, as there's quite a lot of them. But anyway, I'll cut this now, just so you don't have to wait around ages watching me do, well, nothing.
So, here we go then. You'll notice it in just a second. There it is. Has a little shining effect. They are actually really hard to spot. They, as you can see, there's only a little bit of shining that goes onto it. But they're the ones you need to kind of look out for. Once you get your first one, you'll be given a sapphire gem. And your second one then will give you an emerald gem. And eventually we'll get the gem we're actually looking for. So there's the second one. And there's my emerald gem. Now we move on to the third one which will end up giving you a ruby gem. And the fourth one, instead of having a shine, has got that weird circle thing on it. But once you get the fourth one, you can pick up the Caridib. And then a little cutscene will happen. And apparently Leela will find you and throw down a rope. So, go ahead and climb up. Then go ahead and talk to either Leela or Ozan, either way. And eventually Leela will fix this sundial. And then we need to inspect it again. So go ahead and check the sundial. And this time make it point towards the scarab or the calphite, either way. And another beam of light will come off it. And exactly the same as before, you want to turn your camera so it's facing in roughly the same direction and run in that general direction. Eventually, you'll come across Prince Ali and a bunch of other random people. And you'll have another cutscene. So she'll ask you to give her the diamond, it doesn't matter what you choose, eventually she'll try to take it by force. And then there'll be a massive cutscene, and a fight. And is it just me, or do these enemies kind of remind me of the Final Fantasy X-2 enemies? Big fat guy with a massive shield, langy skinny guy, and then the bird that's always with them. Anyway, getting distracted, go ahead and kill these. You can only do a certain maximum amount of damage, I think it's 50, and they can only do a certain amount of you. They're actually incredibly weak. And they do have some special attacks, though they're nothing special. Gotta be honest. Just go ahead and kill these, might take a little while. Yeah, easy enough. They don't do a lot of damage. The one dude I'm fighting now, as you can see, he's got a massive whirlwind attack. All that does is knock you back and stun you for a second. And this fat guy here shines his shield directly in your eyes, which reduces your accuracy for a time. That's what that massive bright white light was earlier. Yeah, 
Yeah, easy enough. And as soon as you've killed them, you have another little tiny cutscene. Upon which we now have to free Prince Ali, so go ahead and talk to him. And you'll untie him, and then you'll have another massive cutscene. And that is it for this quest, people. That is quest complete. In a nutshell. All that's left is run through the cutscenes, go through all the dialogue, and eventually you get that little quest complete screen. So I hope you all find this guide helpful and useful. Hopefully you've now got this quest complete if you've just been watching this. Happy days, congratulations. And the next video, there's actually quite a few secret hidden rewards you can get from this quest. In conjunction with doing a few others, which I'll talk about just after this. So for completing it, you gain the one quest point. 250 agility XP, 250 constitution HP. Same with thieving. You gain a combat lamp with 250 XP, the sapphire, emerald, and ruby. And you also gain access to the Calphite Nursery and two spins on the Squeal of Fortune. And you can actually get a few items and stuff from that Calphite Nursery, which I will go over in another video. Which will probably be the next one after this, come to think of it. So for completing this, you do actually unlock a few secret little boosts. If you've got 80 mining and 80 agility, you can get 20k XP in mining and agility. There's also a Scarborough Mask and a Wasp Scepter, which is not bad, low level stuff. But then there's also another one if you completed Duna Weevil, which gets you the Ankh and at Mechie's Mask, I think it is. And the Ankh is actually a very good offhand weapon for Mage. So I'll be going over that and how to get it in the next video. So other than that, catch you all later.